<laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome to the Wonky Angle where I talk about electronic music both new and old. And today I'm talking about Dave Nolan, the outsider. So uh, some people may know that I frequently look at the iTunes charts. Typically it's the place I look at so that I stay on top of what's popular and stuff like that. But uh, today I discovered something particularly odd about the iTunes dance charts. First of all, the Chainsmokers no longer held up the top spot, which was very exciting for me. But then I noticed several albums from an artist known as Dave Nolan. They were very high up the charts. His entire five album discography was in the top 20. I'd never even heard of this guy. So I, <laughs> I started looking deeper. Now, the first thing that caught my eye about Dave Nolan, besides the weird appearance on the charts, was his album covers, which, as you can see, are, like, seriously the worst album covers ever. They look like they were made in PowerPoint or something. And more weirdness popped up to me as I went on. For instance, all five albums were apparently released in the span of three days in March of last year. His first album, Reflection, came out March 11th. His second, third, and fourth albums, We the Best, Dance, and My Life, came out March 12th. And his fifth album here, The Outsider, came out March 13th. On top of that, every album ordered their tracks alphabetically, with uh, the album Dance being of particular notice, having a track called Intro, which was placed at track 8, because it start with I. <laughs> now, if it wasn't freaking obvious, whoever this Dave Nolan guy was, he was really cheating the system. I don't know what precisely happened, like, maybe there's a way to pay someone to get higher up in the charts in the same way you can buy Twitter followers or something. Or maybe it was something like, uh, y you know that uh, video Fantano made about fake artists on Spotify, like, Deep Watch, right? Like, it was most likely one of those, because there was no YouTube upload anywhere, there was no official website for Dave Nolan, at least not the one who created these particular albums. And on top of that, all the recommended artists were also similarly fake looking, such as Anun Naki's uh, Can't Stop, or Eric Michan's My Life EP, yes, same title as one of the Dave Nolan ones, or my personal favorite, Davery Cobb. And Davery Cobb's album covers are apparently even worse than Nolan's. There's even lots of Comic Sans to boot, but get this, it gets worse, because then I was actually curious enough and stupid enough to listen to one of Dave Nolan's albums. I picked the one with the least awful looking cover, The Outsider, and I actually found it on Spotify and listened to the entire thing. And even recorded clips so that I could use in this video. So fair warning, you will be hearing clips of this music. Music. And as you might guess from the title of this video, this album was quite possibly the longest 33 minutes of my life. I felt like I was losing brain cells just from this entering through my ears. This album is basically my personal hell. So like, everything by Dave Nolan follows a sort of formula. Like you take an already existing EDM song, you find someone else's low-grade cover of it, DJ Turn It Up style, and you reverse it. Then you take like a fairly short clip of that reversed uh, cover that's about 5-10 seconds long, and you can just anywhere in the track, doesn't matter, and then just copy-paste it a few times until it looks like it's the normal length for a pop song, and then boom, you have a track by Dave Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Now, I'll admit I didn't actually recognize any samples used in The Outsider itself, though I know it's bad covers of existing EDM songs because I found a track on his first album, Reflection, called Bust a Move, which I did recognize a sample of Internet Friends by Knife Party. I even played it in reverse just to see... And it wasn't the actual genuine article, it was a cover. But guess what? Just going by iTunes previews of the other uh, four albums, 
I can tell that The Outsider is also easily the worst of the five. Not just because it was the only one I bothered listening to all the way through, uh, the formula he used here is really freaking obvious and carries over everything, and while I'm at it, this also includes the other fake artists I mentioned, like Davery Cobb. But with the other albums, our friend Mr. Nolan sounded like he was at least taking from a couple of different tracks. They, they felt like they, they're, there were multiple ripoffs. But on The Outsider, every track sounded like it was taking off different sections of the exact same shitty cover, and whatever this cover was sounded like it was something out of David Guetta's Nothing But The Beat, complete with Avicii screeching synths. Are you ready to hear what this sounds like? Here goes, clips of Dave Nolan's The Outsider. Enjoy. a small sample of what I personally consider to be the worst album of all time. I can't imagine it getting worse than this unless it's basically this exact same album put on loop, extended further, and, and then played louder or something. <laughs> this is the literal bottom of the barrel in terms of what electronic music is capable of. But what's really especially mind-blowing to me is trying to think about what the success of this album actually means. Because no actual real people are buying this, as far as I can see. There's no reviews on iTunes, there's no one talking about this artist, there's no website or anything. And yet it made all the way up to number 7 on the iTunes dance chart somehow. Like Fantano mentions in his videos on Deep Watch that a possible motive for Spotify to blow these artists up is so they don't have to pay real artists a cut and keep all the revenue for themselves. But something even shadier is going on with Dave Nolan, if you ask me, because there is no possible audience or any purpose for this music at all. It's reversed, looped snippets of bad EDM covers. There's no reason for anyone to ever listen to this, unless this, vi this particular video somehow ends up leading to Dave Nolan becoming a meme or something, Corey Feldman style. I is that the purpose? It's making the worst music possibly imaginable so that it's guaranteed to get of attention from people like me making a video on it? Am I playing right into the Illuminati's hands or something? What the fuck is Dave Nolan and what does this shit mean? I don't know what the fuck this means! All I know is that I wasted lots of time thinking about Dave Nolan and allowing its music to enter into my ears. I don't know what it is or what the reasoning behind its existence could possibly be. This album is a bombless pit of despair, and I'm overall feeling a 0 out of 10. It, no, that, that would validate it as being music. I'm, I'm feeling a negative 5 out of 10. Negative infinity out of 10. I'm overall feeling a fuck my fucking life out of 10. I'm overall feeling a... <laughs> disagree with it. But I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the common thing down there. <laughs> and if it makes people feel any better about my mental health, I'm at least getting to see uh, a Blade Runner tonight. So uh, hopefully that will neutralize this fucking experience. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.
As an update, yes, Blade Runner 2049 was just as amazing as I had anticipated, and I know this is just going to put a major damper on the um, tone of this video, but go see Blade Runner 2049 if you can. It is amazing.